How's it going, YouTube? Welcome, I suppose, <laughs> to New York City. I have survived my first, maybe last, run into New York City. And it was interesting. For anyone out there who happens to see this, who um, has made a run into New York City before without any form of education on how to navigate the city aside from uh, whatever help or hindrance that uh, GPS might be, you know that uh, New York City is a very special place to navigate and get around. I feel a whole lot more comfortable trying to navigate a semi-truck around Chicago than I do trying to navigate around New York City. Then again, I am far and away more experienced with Chicago in a semi-truck than I am New York City. This again, this is my first time here in New York City with a semi-truck. Um, whereas I used to do quasi-local deliveries around Chicago when I was company with Werner doing Dollar Tree stores. So I will, coming into New York City with that experience, navigating the very close quarters of urban streets came in handy. However, the stereotypes about New York drivers, 100% <laughs> true. Oh, man. I think I got cut off and almost hit by, I want to say, at least 15 different people. No, I think it was over 20, actually, now that I think about uh, on the expressways as well uh, and how crappy those people were. Just, oh, yeah, you know, I'm just going to, one of these. This one lady, I was stuck in traffic and we were crawling. Uh, we were on 278 and she's on an on-ramp coming up onto the expressway from whatever road it was. I think it was 38th or 24th. I don't remember which one it was. Anyways, we're, we're, it's, I think it's before one of the bridges, not the Verrazano, after the Verrazano, I don't know. Somewhere on 278 woman comes up off the on-ramp and just now I I was crawling along so I was leaving a gap between myself and a little box truck ahead of me and she's like oh yeah you know but instead of just kind of merging in and taking us the spot you know right in front of me she made a left turn across my nose gave me you know a little oh half-hearted way for leaving that little spot for and then she immediately merged into progressing traffic and I'm thinking to myself I am not in Kansas Illinois Indiana Ohio anywhere anymore this is I'm out of my depth entirely and I am not ashamed to admit that fact in any capacity that New York City is a special kind of crazy I have heard tell that Miami is worse and that Los Angeles might as well be the ninth layer of hell. Um, ninth level of hell, whatever you want to call it. I have no idea. I've never been to Los Angeles. I've been to the LA Valley back when I was training over the road. Uh, but I, the closest I got to LA itself was going to Stockton, California. And... Um, But we didn't stick around there. We backtracked back out, I think on 15, and picked up one of the California freeways to go north, I believe. So we didn't stay in the LA Valley for long. We climbed out almost immediately. Uh, no, I forget. Well, anyway. Anyway, you slice it, didn't stay in LA long enough to experience LA driving with a semi truck which I'm actually thankful for. However, having experienced New York, I'm not sure I ever want to come back with a semi-truck ever again. Uh, this place, this city, honestly, it's a magical place. And uh, I haven't been to this area in 
eight years. I flew into Newark on a uh, connecting flight on my way to Providence, Rhode Island. I was doing a job out there with a friend of mine uh, back in 2013, which of course is now over eight years ago, which is ridiculous, but you know, time flies when you're having fun, I guess. So I flew into Newark and I could look across uh, whatever bay it was um, and see the New York City skyline. It was a morning arrival, so it wasn't anything really special. It was cloudy, so I mean, it was all right. I got a couple pictures that I think I put on Facebook or whatever, but I have long since archived those photos or deleted them or lost them or whatever. But uh, now I'm back. First time in eight years I've been to the actual New York City region. I've been close-ish, uh, but never closer than 50, 60, 70 miles. Maybe, no, I'm sorry, not even that close. No closer than like 100 or so miles with a semi-truck. So coming almost into the heart of the beast has been a bit of an experience. Um, and getting cut off by over 15 people on expressways and then the local roads you know the actual streets of new york city in the different boroughs <laughs> that was special but you know that's new york uh one funny ish now story is that uh, no the, not one funny story the funniest part about the story now is that I didn't know that I could stay on 278 to get all the way to uh, the exit for that would have been a lot closer to my delivery point so like an idiot I followed my GPS and ended up uh, taking a detour through the neighborhoods of New York uh, I went through part of Queens I think uh, a little bit of Brooklyn maybe I don't something i do not know my new york city geography so i'm sure some folks here who might be seeing this video later on are laughing at me hysterically oh he doesn't know where new york i just he doesn't know new york at all it's like well okay yeah at least i'm not gonna try to front and lie and say i do because i sure as i'm sitting here do not anyway so ended up on uh i ended up off the expressway and I'm navigating by my GPS, taking it's taking me on truck route, so I didn't end up on like some residential street, you know, ripping cars apart or whatever. Um, but uh, as I was crawling along, it told me to turn on this one particular street. So that was the truck route, okay. I make an awkward right-hand turn into a one-way street and there's one lane. But left and right are school buses, just parked all the way up this stretch of street that uh, paralleled 278 and I'm looking at this gauntlet that I have to run with a loaded semi truck tandems back a little bit to account for the weight of my freight and I'm thinking to myself this could be it this is where I get stuck this is where I can't move this is where I have to call the police to help me back up or get out of here this is where I hit something this is where I tear off a mirror this is where this is where it all ends fortunately that was not the case However, when I crossed over the next street and in, with this little sort of a bridge, not bridge, um, this little passageway, one-way passage, so to speak, pathway that was paved by some miracle, um, going down this, again, loaded semi, and uh, there's cars on either side, and this very special gentleman had left. I believe it was his Mercedes, kind of half out into the street. And I come upon this as I'm trying to navigate this curving, curving pathway, trying to avoid hitting cars, taking off mirrors, scratching anyone's bumpers or paint with my any part of my truck. I see this car sitting here, no occupant, no notion that I'm there, nothing. And I come upon it and there's maybe maybe eight feet between this car's right rear quarter panels and the parked car on the other side of the, on the right side of the street and i know i can't fit through this gap i know i'm too wide and if i even try i'm i'm hitting something that it's just gonna be it i'm gonna be over so i'm like all right well so i pulled up to a stop set the brakes and i waited hit the hazards got out told the guy thankfully there's only one person behind me at the time told the guy behind me hey there's a guy up ahead of me um he's parked halfway in the street i can't get past you know it is what it is i'm stuck i can't i have to wait until he moves or gets moved and he's like man that sucks I'm like yeah well, what are you gonna do um thankfully I didn't have to wait too long 
apparently the gentleman was uh, nearby, saw what was going on, and he came out and just real quick got in his car, didn't say much of anything at all, didn't even say a word to me, I don't think, he just got in his car, moved it, and I was able to clear along the way, and without incident, but that was uh, an experience, that was interesting, and uh, so, yeah, got through that hurdle, kicking myself all the way for not staying on 278, and I knew, and I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew, as soon as I was watching semi-trucks, full-size semi-trucks, staying on 278 and not getting off onto uh, whatever the road was, that exit 27, that says, any vehicle over 12 foot 9 must exit, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, is this a truck route, because you got low clearances, but that's it, there's just that one sign, I'm like, I didn't know any better, so... I exited. A bunch of other trucks stayed on. I'm like, oh, what do they know that I don't? And apparently they knew that you could stay on 278 and it would get you, you know, on uh, the way you go. However, I don't know that I know that I know that for sure. But semi trucks were staying on. I have no idea if they were exiting further up and then maneuvering around whatever obstacle there was. I literally have no idea, and I'm not sure I want to find out uh, what that was all about because that would mean having to come back to New York City, and I'm not sure I want to do that again with a semi truck anytime in the near future. So, but anyway, New Yorkers. If any of you are watching and you live anywhere near the uh, Long Island area or on Long Island itself, you're welcome. I brought you 42,000 pounds of bourbon and whiskey. So you can thank me later. Thank me in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe, whatever. <laughs> I'll take whatever I can get because I got paid pretty well. All right. In fairness, the load did pay pretty well, which is why I'm here in the first place. And also, I had, again, I had never driven to New York with a semi truck before. And honestly, it's one of those things that I decided to do just for the experience. And number one, to say that I did it. You know, number two, uh, to see if it's actually worth it. You know, getting freight into New York City and then back out of New York City. Do the rates pay well? Is the mileage decent? Because the truck stop parking is garbage. Truck stops themselves, it's like, I mean, I think NASCAR drivers have more space to work with during, you know, a caution flag on a pit road when the whole field comes in for four tires and fuel. Uh, it's it's bad. It's rough. It's tough. It's tight. And God help you if um, you don't know what you're doing because it's not going to be fun. Uh, I was talking to a gentleman, um, fellow owner-operator, Back in February, I believe, maybe March, February and March time frame. And uh, he was, I believe he told me he was a resident of Ken Connecticut, I think. And he was telling me about what he had to do to get his CDL and that it was a much more involved process much more in-depth testing than it was for me to get my Illinois uh, CDL because the Illinois the, the school that I went to to get my CDL and take the state of Illinois CDL exam uh, the school I went to prepared me exclusively for the Illinois CDL exam and that was it so when I got out of that and then joined up with Werner Enterprises and went over the road yeah I knew what I was doing to a point but I never coupled on couple the trailer you know, I'd never uh, backed into a dock. You know, there's a lot of stuff I hadn't done that I had to learn then uh, on the road with my trainer. And fortunately, I had a very excellent trainer and I learned a great deal from him. Owner operator for Werner Enterprises, uh, doing very well for himself and a uh, really good guy. So that helped me out tremendously. But I would not, given the option, given the choice, if I was a trainer or if I was someone who was fairly new to the industry, I would seek to avoid operating in or around New York City on principle just because this is not a city you operate in or near 
at all if you question your skill or if you are faint of heart or if you do not know how to take into account your weight, the space you occupy, how well your truck does or does not maneuver in tight spaces, um, and if you have very poor depth perception and or you do not understand uh, the clearance your truck needs overhead in order to avoid striking objects because this city can, will, and shall eat you alive. Lock, stop, and barrel, nothing left a lot of, uh, at all of you. Your soul consumed, you will be destroyed. This city will destroy you if you are not careful because everything is old, everything is tight, um, and the odds of that changing at all in the next 10 years is almost zero. So uh, you must be extraordinarily careful and you must be very well prepared, in my opinion, again, my opinion, to operate in or around New York City just because of how literally insane this place and this region is. It is so densely packed. Traffic is a constant everything. Uh, and... If you are off the expressway and on local streets, God help you because you need to be patient, you need to be aware, and you need to be willing to uh, maneuver in very interesting ways. And you also need to know when you can be aggressive and assert dominance over a lane or an area uh, in order to safely maneuver your vehicle truck and trailer more accurately um and you also need to know when to yield and just let the new yorkers do their thing because they don't care i mean i had uh, it had to be a seventy thousand dollar bmw suv shot between another truck that was parked on the left side of a one-way street to deliver to deliver and then my left front fender and mirror didn't care like he was James Bond just because he could be James Bond in his big special SUV, whatever. I don't even remember. Maybe it wasn't Mercedes. I don't know. It was black. It was expensive. And I knew if I'd hit it, it was going to be a seriously bad day for me because, well, you know, New York. Uh, and with my luck, he would probably would have been, you know, a lawyer at a accident firm and would have cleaned me out for the next 15 years. Who knows? Anyway, you have to know that's coming. You have to be aware of it. You have to be ready for it. You cannot drive through the city of New York or any of its boroughs or any region around New York with road rage. You cannot drive around this area expecting everyone to yield to you. You have to fight intelligently for every inch of space you occupy. Otherwise, someone or something is going to occupy that space for you. And that's just the way it's going to be because this is New York. New York does not care about you or your feelings or whatever you need in order to do your job. It is New York, and either you fight intelligently or it eats you. And that's just the way it is. Uh, you have to be on your game 110% of the time in and around New York City, or you are looking at a collision with someone or something. And God save you if that happens because... Nothing else probably will, unless you have dash cam footage proving that it definitely was not your fault. Um, because, again, it's New York City. Everything is close. Everything is tight. Everything is old. And people are just looking for an excuse to eat you alive here, almost literally. So you just have to be on your game the entire time, or you're going to have a very, 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 very bad day or a bad week, or a bad year, or a bad 10 years dealing with the after effects of just, you know, one little mistake, because it doesn't take much here. So, with all of that being said, I cannot wait to get out of New York City. I used up all my hours for the day uh, getting into the city for my delivery, because traffic is a special thing, and I started on a short uh, rest break in order to avoid... Uh, what I could of the traffic this morning and it kind of worked out but again it's New York and traffic is a constant here and it's just it is what it is you have to be willing to sacrifice one element or another in order to uh, you know get in get out get your job done and get out and get moving again so it just it's just how it is so yeah tomorrow morning 
onward, out, off, up, somewhere. Just keeping an eye on where I'm parked here to make sure no one's going to clobber me. And, uh, well, we'll see all that, uh, how well that actually works. But anyway, so yeah, New York City, fun place. Do not recommend it for semi-truck drivers, but there is apparently good paying loads into and out of New York City, at least as of December 2021. What that market will look like in the next um, week, next month, next year, I have no idea. Um, but, you know, it's going to be something. I mean, there's always freight moving around here because New York Harbor is at least operational, unlike uh, Port of Los Angeles. Uh, San Francisco and then San Diego apparently they're all backed up with you know hundreds of ships waiting to get in and get offloaded New York Harbor at least seems to be functional so good for you New York well done so yeah how that actually checks out I don't know but I'm here I'm alive I plan to stay that way and I plan to get myself the hell out of here as soon as I can and with that being said friends I'll see you down the road.